Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the whole of Edexcel GCSE Physics of Waves and the Electromagnetic Spectrum. If you'd like to follow along with this video, over on my website you can download my notes and my flashcards. Ok, so the first thing we need to know about waves is that they transfer energy. And they do this without transferring matter, so the particles always stay in the same place. So imagine you're at the beach and you throw a ball into the sea, so I'll draw the ball here. Now, the waves constantly come towards you at the beach, but the ball doesn't. The ball just bobs up and down in the water. And this is because the actual water molecules aren't moving with the waves, only the energy moves. Now, this is a diagram of a wave. Now, the tall bits are called the crests, and the low bits are called the troughs. The height of the wave is the amplitude, and it's measured from the rest position, which is the black line going through the middle of the wave, up to the top of the wave. Now the distance between two crests is the wavelength. Now frequency is the number of wavelengths that pass a point per second. So the closer together the wavelengths, the more that will pass a point per second. So this is a wave with a high frequency and this is a wave with a low frequency. Now frequency can be calculated by dividing velocity by the wavelength. And wavelength is this little symbol that looks like a backward H. Now frequency is measured in hertz, wavelength is measured in meters, and velocity is measured in meters per second. Now there are two types of waves, we have transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Now transverse waves are the ones we just looked at, their vibrations go up and down. But in longitudinal waves the vibrations go left and right. Now, Longitudinal waves are pretty much the same as transverse waves, but instead of having crests and troughs, they have compressions, which is when the vibrations are close together, and rarefractions, which is when the vibrations are far apart. Now, a wavelength is still measured from one compression to another compression. Now, some examples of transverse waves are light waves, water waves at a beach, and all waves on the electromagnetic spectrum, and we'll look at those waves later. Now some examples of longitudinal waves are sound waves and P waves, which are a type of seismic waves that are to do with earthquakes. Now a sound wave with a high pitch just has very short wavelengths, so the compressions are really close together, and sound with a low pitch has really long wavelengths. Now waves travel at different speeds in different materials, and when the material a wave is travelling in changes, three things can happen. A wave can be transmitted, which is when it passes through the material, Absorbed, which is when the object just simply absorbs the wave, or reflected, which is when the wave bounces back off the material. Now we're going to look at a type of transmission, and this is refraction. So let's say that in this diagram, the light pink side is air, and the dark pink side is glass. Now imagine a light wave travelling towards the glass at an angle. Now this side of the light wave hits the glass first, so this is going to slow down and change speed first. Now this side is still travelling at a normal speed, so this is going to change speed last. Now, as this changes first, and this is still going, this pulls the wave around in this direction. It starts travelling at an angle through the glass. Now, this change of direction is called refraction. Now, when this happens, the frequency of the wave doesn't change. Now, we can draw diagrams to show refraction happening. So, we can draw the wave coming in to the new material and then the change of direction. There are two angles that we can measure from this. We can measure the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. So the angle of incidence is just the angle that the wave enters the new material and the angle of refraction is how much the wave has changed direction. Okay, so we also said that when waves hit a boundary they can be reflected. So as a wave comes into a new material, so say this new material is glass, they can bounce straight back off. And this is called reflection. When you look in a mirror, the light waves are coming from the light source, hitting you, hitting the mirror, and then bouncing back off into your eye so you can see yourself. Now the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are always equal. So here is the angle of incidence. Again, this is just the angle that the wave came into the new material. Now here is the angle of reflection. And this is the angle that it bounces back off of the material at. Now these angles will always be equal. Now reflection can be specular or diffuse. 
Now, this is an example of specular reflection. So, the surface is completely flat. All of the light waves can bounce off uniformly. But diffuse reflection is when the surface is uneven or rough. So, as each light wave comes in, they all hit different points, so they're all reflected at different angles. Although the angle of incidence and reflection will always be the same, for every light wave they're going in different directions because they've all hit different points. Now it's not just light waves that can be reflected, all types of waves can, and a useful one is sound waves. So if we use really, really high pitched sounds, we can fire them at things and they'll be reflected straight back. And this is ultrasound. And this is useful for loads of different things. We can use it to create pictures of babies in the womb. Okay, so now we're going to look at the electromagnetic spectrum. Now this is the electromagnetic spectrum. It's a range of all transverse waves depending on their frequency. Now this also shows visible light. And this makes up a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and it's the only part that human senses can detect. So red light has a really low frequency. Blue light has a really high frequency. Now it's also really important that you know that all of the colours on the spectrum of light come together to form white. Okay, so different objects are different colours because that's the colour that they reflect. So we know that white light is made up of all of the colours on the spectrum. So this means as normal white hits an object, so let's say this red ball, all of the colours are hitting it. But because this ball is red, the red wave is reflected back to our eye. So that's the colour we see it as. And all of the other colours are absorbed by the ball. It's exactly the same for any object. So if we had a blue ball, all of the colours except blue would be absorbed and blue would be reflected back. Now objects that are black absorb all of the light. And objects that are transparent or translucent, so objects that are see-through or kind of see-through, allow light to pass through so they don't reflect or absorb lots of light. So they let most of the light pass through. Now we can use lenses to refract light. So there are two types of lenses, convergent lenses and divergent lenses. Now convergent lenses bring light waves together. So imagine a wave coming to the lens. Now it changes direction and then changes direction as it leaves, bringing it to this angle. The same thing keeps happening with lots of different waves until they all come together at a focus point. So this is exactly how the lens works in your eye. They bring all of the light rays to a focus point at the back of your eye where it can be detected. Now divergent lenses are the complete opposite. They spread light out. So as light waves come over to the lens, they are refracted that way, and then outways. And again, this keeps happening with lots of waves, causing them all to spread out in different directions. If this video helped with your physics revision, please subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have.